trigonometric integrals, level 7. Now that we covered pretty much all the possible cases involving products of sine and cosine, we are going to go over a couple of trigonometric integrals that do not fit nicely into one of the forms from the previous videos. For the most part, these integrals are slightly more challenging. You need to be familiar with some algebraic techniques, and at times, you do need to have some insight and ingenuity. With that said, let's go ahead and try the first example. Find the integral of cosine squared of x times sine of 2x dx. Alright, this integral contains a product of sine and cosine, but notice that both functions contain distinct arguments. They contain different angles. So your first thought might be that perhaps we need to use the product to some identities. But notice that cosine has a power other than 1. So it's not possible to use those identities, since they require that both trigonometric functions have a power of 1. Now what? Well, remember, there are additional trigonometric identities we can use. For example, we can use a double angle identity for sine. So let's go ahead and use it to replace sine of 2x with 2 times sine of x times cosine of x as follows. Then we go ahead and factor out the constant 2. Notice that we now have a case 1 integral. In addition, we also have a single cosine factor. So now, it's just a matter of replacing cosine squared using the Pythagorean identity. Doing that, we obtain the following. Then it's just a matter of carrying out a u substitution. Doing that, we obtain the following integral in terms of u. Next, we simplify the expression and take the integral term by term, obtaining the following expression, making sure we include the constant c. Then, we distribute the constant 2 and replace u with sine of x. Doing that yields the final answer equal to sine squared of x minus 1 half times sine raised to the power of 4 of x plus c. Keep in mind that you have various trigonometric identities at your disposal to rewrite the integrand into a form that is much easier and familiar to you. Alright, let's move along to the next example. Find the integral of cosine cube of x over the square root of sine of x. Recall that up to this point, we developed techniques to solve trigonometric integrals that contain products of sine and cosine. However, the methods used to solve products of sine and cosine can be used on some quotients involving sine and cosine. Notice that we have a quotient that contains sines and cosines. At first glance, the square root in the denominator looks intimidating, and it's most likely distracting you from the fact that we have an odd powered cosine term. This means that we essentially have a case 1 trigonometric integral. So we go ahead and break apart the odd powered cosine term into a single factor and an even powered factor as follows. Remember, as long as you can isolate a single factor of degree 1 from the numerator, you can use the techniques learned from the previous videos. Next, we go ahead and use the Pythagorean identity and replace cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared. This way, we can now carry out a u substitution by setting u equal to sine of x and du equal to cosine of x dx. Carrying out the substitutions, we obtain the following integral in terms of u. Next, we can rewrite the radical in the denominator as a fraction of power. This way, we can divide the terms in the numerator with u to the power of 1 half, making sure we correctly apply the rules of the exponents. Simplifying the expression, we obtain the following. After that, we go ahead and find the integral term by term, making sure we include the constant c. The final step is to replace u with sine of x. Doing that, we obtain the final answer equal to 2 times sine of x raised to the power of 1 half minus 2 fifths times sine of x raised to the power of 5 halves plus c. This example shows that it's possible to apply the techniques used for integrals that contain products of sine and cosine to find integrals that contain quotients of sine and cosine, as well as fractional powers such as 1 half. As long as you can isolate a single sine or cosine factor from the numerator and follow the steps learned from the preceding videos. Alright, let's try the next example. Find the integral of sine raised to the power of 7 of x over cosine raised to the power of 4 of x dx. Notice that this integral contains an odd power of sine and an even power of cosine. This resembles a case 2 integral from the earlier videos. 
So we start finding the integral by breaking apart the odd sign term into an even power term and a single power term of degree 1, as follows. Next, we go ahead and rewrite the even powered sign term into an expression containing sine squared. Then we go ahead and use the Pythagorean identity to rewrite sine squared in terms of cosine, as follows. Now that we have a single sine factor in the rest of the integrand in terms of cosine, we go ahead and carry out a u substitution. We let u equal cosine of x. Then we find the derivative of u with respect to x, and solve for sine of x dx. Next, we substitute these expressions throughout, obtaining the following integral in terms of u. Then, we factor out the negative sign. Next, we need to expand the expression in the numerator. Notice that we have a binomial raised to the power of 3. Expanding the binomial, we obtain the following. Next, we go ahead and divide each term by u raised to the power of 4, making sure we correctly apply the rules of exponents. We now have an integrand containing sums and differences of terms. So we are free to take the integral term by term. Doing that, we obtain the following. Making sure we include the constant c. The last step is to replace u with cosine of x and rewrite any negative powers as positive powers. Doing that, we obtain the final answer equal to 1 over 3 times cosine cube of x minus 3 over cosine of x minus 3 times cosine of x plus 1 third times cosine cube of x plus c. So under the right circumstances, we can use the techniques developed up to this point to deal with quotients of sine and cosine, as long as you are able to isolate a single sine of x or cosine of x term in the numerator. This method can be used to solve these types of integrals. Alright, let's go over the final example. Find the integral of cosine cube of x over the quantity 1 minus sine of x dx. It seems that we are face to face with another quotient containing sines and cosines. Notice that cosine has an odd power. If we try to decompose this expression and then try to apply a u substitution, we will end up with a complicated integral that will lead us nowhere. To the untrained eye, this integral might look impossible. Notice that the numerator is actually a difference of squares, so we can factor this binomial as follows. This way, we can cancel out the factor containing the quantity 1 minus u, and we are left with the quantity 1 plus u. All that is left to do is to integrate each term and replace u with sine of x, obtaining the final answer equal to sine of x plus 1 half times sine squared of x plus c. All right. Let's assume that you did not have that insight, or it would have never occurred to you to factor by using difference of squares. How else can we find the integral? This integral actually requires a classical algebraic manipulation that you learned in your previous math classes. Notice the denominator contains the expression 1 minus sine of x, two terms subtracted from one another. Recall that we can modify a quotient of this form by multiplying both numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. In this case, the conjugate of 1 minus sine of x is 1 plus sine of x. So we go ahead and multiply the numerator and the denominator by this conjugate. Notice the multiplication in the denominator is essentially a difference of squares. So this product simplifies as follows. Now we can replace the denominator with cosine squared of x via the Pythagorean identity. With this replacement, we are free to simplify the cosine terms as follows. Notice that this expression is easier to manage. All that is left to do is to distribute the cosine of x term and take the integral term by term. The integral of the first expression is equal to sine of x, and the integral of the second expression requires a u substitution. Carrying out the substitution results in the following integral. Finally, we include the constant c, obtaining the final answer equal to sine of x plus 1 half times sine squared of x plus c. At times, you might have to multiply by the conjugate to tackle on some trigonometric integrals. Alright, in our next video, we're going to begin learning new techniques to help us find integrals that contain combinations of secant and tangent.